What is molecular hydrogen? Simply, it's two hydrogen atoms that are bound together. It's the Hindenburg, it's the sun, it's an alternative energy source. It's three times more energy dense than gasoline. And because of that, because there's so much energy, uh, money and energy, that's where most of the research in hydrogen has been. However, recently hydrogen gas has been shown to be therapeutic and medicinal. So during this presentation, we'll review some of this research, which is incredible. But first, let's dive into the origin of hydrogen. Perhaps the reason hydrogen exerts such a biological effect is because it's been intimately involved in the origins of the universe, the genesis of life, and the evolution of eukaryotes, which are plant and animal cells. The late professor Harlow Shapley of Harvard University proclaimed, in the beginning, hydrogen. Shapley believed that starting with hydrogen, natural laws, and sufficient amounts of time, one could explain the origin of everything in the periodic table and therefore life itself. We can go back to the famous Stanley Miller experience in science in 1953 that showed hydrogen as one of the molecules that was involved in the production of the various molecules of life. This image shows the deep, three, uh, deep sea hydrothermal vents from the ocean where life likely originated from. They may have served as an energy source for the first forms of life and the first types of prokaryotes. And very interesting, an article in Science in 1975 said, the last common ancestor of life also metabolized hydrogen for energy. That's again suggesting its involvement in the entire evolutionary process. And we see it in nature today. Uh, who has heard of the natural healing springs or the healing waters around the world? Some of these waters have been documented to have therapeutic uh, potential and benefits. And some scientists have actually tested these waters to see what's in them. And guess what they found? Hydrogen gas. In Germany, Mexico, Japan, and India. Makes you kind of think, doesn't it? Now, let me show you some of the foundation for the research around hydrogen. Right now, molecular hydrogen is shown to have therapeutic potential in over 170 human and disease models. Essentially, every organ and system in the human body. As we move through this lesson, you'll see research on hydrogen from all these different journals, many of which are peer-reviewed and have a very high impact factor. In fact, in 2007, there were only about 50 articles that were published on the medical effects of hydrogen gas and its potential as being therapeutic. But no one really took a lot of interest until this groundbreaking article was published in the journal Nature Medicine, which was one of the most prestigious, highly respected journals. And since then, this article has been uh, cited over 1,300 times, and research has taken off exponentially. We're starting to see research piling up in the United States at some very prestigious programs. One of the most important studies came from Loma Linda University in 2013 by Dixon and colleagues. They say that hydrogen has marked therapeutic potential to help with the top eight fatality-causing diseases listed by the CDC. These are cardiovascular, respiratory, cerebrovascular, Alzheimer's, diabetes, malignant neoplasms, influenza, pneumonia, and nephritis. If that doesn't get you thinking, rewind and listen again. According to Dixon, hydrogen showed therapeutic potential in eight of the top fatality-causing diseases. So now we wonder, how does hydrogen exert these biological effects? Like I said, it has a therapeutic potential in essentially every organ in the human body, but how? Well, the original theory from this article we've already seen was that hydrogen acts as an antioxidant by selectively reducing cytotoxic hydroxyl radicals. Now, note the word selective, because we'll be coming back to that later. So let's just dis dissect this title. What are free radicals? Just so we understand, free radicals have an unpaired electron, which means they're very reactive. Then you also have the reactive oxygen species like hydroxyl radicals and a few other strong antioxidants or uh, strong oxidants that can cause damage. Which, as you see here, they can damage the RNA, DNA, protein, cell membranes, they're linked to cell death, and basically every disease there is. Neurological disorders, inflammatory disorders, cancer, diabetes, and the list just goes on. How are these reactive oxygen species generated? primarily in the mitochondria through the electron transport chain. Now, don't worry if this doesn't make sense or if the, the technical terms are a little over your head, but for those interested, uh, oxygen reduces to superoxide and then can go on to form hydrogen peroxide, hydroxyl radicals, and other oxidants and prooxidants, which cause all this damage. Notice that most of the damage in the, is in the mitochondria inside of the cell. Our body, though, has its own self-defense system and is prepared to deal with normal amounts of oxidative stress. For instance, we need oxygen to breathe, and every time you breathe oxygen, around 3% of that oxygen can actually turn into these cytotoxic oxygen radicals that damage your body. Uh, because this is a natural process, though, the body is prepared to defend against it. We have various peptides and enzymes to protect our bodies, reducers like glutathione, superoxide dismutase, catalase, and a number of other things. Our lives are balanced between oxidation and reduction. Uh, you could also consider it like a battery with a negative and a positive charge. 
Uh, life is totally balanced on this. On the one side, you have oxidants that the body needs, and then on the other side, you have reducers to balance out those oxidants. When this relationship is out of balance with too many oxidants or reducers, though, you'll end up with oxidative stress or reductive stress. Our body's antioxidant self-defense system can be lowered by diseases, toxins from the environment, and our diets and aging. This could lead to lower glutathione levels or lower catalase levels and therefore cause an excessive amount of oxidative stress in the brain, the liver, or other organs of the body causing various diseases because it's unbalanced. But that doesn't mean that all free radicals are bad. There's a misconception that all free radicals are just toxic, bad, kill you, and that we should overdose on antioxidant supplements to live forever. Uh, the free radicals or reactive oxygen species are also very important signaling molecules, though. You see, they're important for signal transduction, they're important for immunity, for vasodilation. Uh, nitric oxide is a free radical, and it would be devastating if we neutralize nitric oxide. We'd lose a lot of benefits, a lot of uh, function uh, cardiovascularly, and the activation of, of transcription factors. So our bodies really need to keep these two forces in balance, which is why hyd hydrogen's nature as a selective antioxidant is so incredible. Unlike supplemental accent antioxidants that scavenge free radicals that they touch, Hydrogen is selective. It's a selective antioxidant, which was actually a term created to describe how hydrogen functions. This is where it gets crazy. It only scavenges the most cytotoxic or cell-damaging free radicals when they're out of balance, such as the hydroxyl radicals, whose only job it is to produce and kill stuff inside the body. Uh, and all these other ones, like nitric oxide that our body needs, hydrogen doesn't neutralize, almost like it's an intelligent molecule. Now, this is a very important slide. This explains why hydrogen is an incredibly beneficial antioxidant and, in our opinion, better than supplemental antioxidants. Uh, first off, we have rapid diffusion. Consider the fact that it's the smallest, lightest molecule in the universe. It's just two, two hydrogen atoms, two electrons, and two protons. It's neutral. Therefore, it's hydrophobic. This means that it's able to get through the cell membranes very easily, as opposed to other antioxidants. And uh, as opposed to other antioxidants, also, there's no byproducts. When it neutralizes free radicals, it produces H2O. So when you drink hydrogen-infused water, like the water from the Lourdes Hydrofix, you're putting pure H2 in your body that can penetrate the cellular membrane and basically convert oxidative stress into water. For example, take this study comparing hydrogen to vitamin C and vitamin E in the context of testicular oxidative stress. On graph B, the one on the bottom, this one right here, we have uh, the serum, let's see, we have T, which stands for testosterone, and we have the control. That's the normal range that you want to be at, this one right here. Then you have oxidative stress with no treatment. Then you see the testosterone levels just plummet. At H2, it goes right back up. It maintains that hydrogen gas gets the testosterone levels right where they need to be. But when you gave vitamin C and vitamin E, the improvement wasn't nearly as significant. They demonstrated the same thing with sperm motility and sperm uh, concentration. Again, hydrogen gas seemed to be a superior antioxidant in this case to either vitamin C or E. A similar finding was observed in the effects of vitamin C and E and hydrogen on placental function. So people who have preeclampsia, for example, the hydrogen gas was shown to have a beneficial effect on HCG, where vitamin C and vitamin E did a little bit as well. But here's the difference. If you look at the study, it was shown that vitamin C and E actually suppress cell viability. So they're not living as well. It increased in immune responses, tumor necrosis, factor alpha, and other problems where hydrogen gas didn't have any of those side effects. It just had the ben beneficial effect on HCG. Now, onto the good stuff, the cellular effects of hydrogen on health as an antioxidant and signal modulator. This is what hydrogen does in our bodies. Check out this table prepared by Tyler LeBaron, our friend over at the Molecular Hydrogen Institute. He combed through hundreds of research papers to prepare this table, showing the markers altered by hydrogen use. On the left, we see markers of oxidative stress that are at the foundation of many diseases that are chemically reduced by molecular hydrogen. And this is where hydrogen can do its thing, get right in, in the right conditions, in the right cases. Remember, if you have normal safe levels of hydrogen gas, it's not going to reduce because you don't want to reduce oxidative stress more than you need to. On the other side, the green arrows, you see the markers of ox antioxidant status. Hydrogen gas is actually able to increase or upregulate to bring back to homeostasis our body's own antioxidant defense systems. Here's another way to organize the data. This organizes the biological markers that hydrogen gas uh, impacts to function as an anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, regulate the immune system, mitochondrial function, and, and endoplasmic reticulum stress. Molecular hydrogen can also regulate the antioxidant production in our own body. 
it can activate what's called the NRF2 pathway, which leads to an increased production of superoxide dismutase, glutathione catalase, and oxygenase, which are extremely cytoprotective. If those sound familiar, it's because glutathione, superoxide dismutase, and catalase are the molecules that form the body's natural defense system against free radicals, the ones that we went over earlier. Hydrogen upregulates the production of these defenses. Hydrogen may also prevent excessive amounts of reactive oxygen species by actually preventing them from forming in the first place via cell modulation. There's a ton of stuff going on here, but suffice it to say that hydrogen gas in the right circumstances can actually downregulate the NADPH oxidase systems that preventing reactive oxygen species from forming in the first place. This is basically prevention being better than treatment. Hydrogen may also act as some sort of novel signaling molecule. Under the right conditions, hydrogen can alter the level of activity of over 200 different biomolecules. This could mean that hydrogen may provide cellular protective effects for hours and even days after using hydrogen. Now let's check out the safety profile of molecular hydrogen. There's really no known toxicity that we found so far. There's literally hundreds of studies already on therapeutic application, but the fact that these are, uh, the fact that deep, uh, it's been used in deep sea diving since the 1940s to prevent decompression sickness, hydrogen gas is able to prevent that from happening. In the next few slides, I'll show you how hydrogen is produced in our own intestinal bacteria. So the safety profile in hydrogen gas is, is pretty significant. Uh, intestinal bacteria is very important. One of the reasons why is because when you eat fruits and vegetables, fiber, you're producing hydrogen in your gut. And so therefore we have uh, micromolar levels of hydrogen gas being produced in our bodies and have a basal level of hydrogen gas in our blood since the dawn of time. In 1988, hydrogen gas was selected uh, or suggested to be a therapeutic antioxidant produced from bacteria. And in 2009, it was confirmed by a report from the Forth uh, Forsyth Institute in Boston, Massachusetts and the University of Florida. So now that we understand how hydrogen gas functions at a chemical level and some of the impacts it makes on the body, Let's dive into the medical and clinical applications that have already been discovered. This is where it just gets really fascinating. And a reminder, this is not health advice, this is not medical advice, I'm just trying to relay the findings of various studies to the best of my ability. Now we're going to highlight some of the more relevant studies in this presentation, but you can find a lot more research on holyhydrogen.com. Click on the research tab of the website and you'll see uh, a big selection that, that we've gathered to you know cover all of these different issues. Uh, and medical concerns here. Uh, for the sake of this presentation though, here are the clinical applications we're going to review. Uh, disease treatment, toxic radicals, ATP production and mitochondria, neurological health, cancer treatment, diabetes, obesity, metabolic syndrome, cardiovascular health, uh, gut health, and digestion. And we're only going to review a couple studies for each of these in the presentation, but you can find way more on this research page with this table on holyhydrogen.com. Uh, so first, hydrogen, a novel option in the human disease treatment. This is probably the best single compilation of how hydrogen mitigates diseases in our body. It was compiled very recently. Uh, it reviews the basic research in the latest clinical applications of hydrogen gas in multi-organ system diseases to establish strategies for the clinical treatment of those diseases. Now, unfortunately, this paper is massive and has almost 200 references, so doing it justice would take way more time than we have here today. Uh, but in short, the conclusion was that hydrogen can alleviate the damage in multiple organ diseases and is safe to use. So if you're going to do more research, this would be a great article to start with. You'll notice in the bottom right hand corner here, I'm including links to all of the articles so that you can go straight to the source instead of just relying on what I'm telling you here. Now, hydrogen gas neutralizes toxic radicals. Here's the pivotal article from Nature Magazine that we've already reviewed, but it's worth bringing up here because I want to bring your attention to inflammation based diseases. We discussed free radicals and reactive oxygen species earlier and how detrimental they are. Now let's zoom into the highlighted areas of this study to see what happens when free radicals and oxygen, uh, reactive oxygen species are out of control. Continued oxidative stress can lead to chronic inflammation, which could in turn mediate most chronic diseases including cancer, diabetes, cardiovascular, neurological, and pulmonary diseases. This process can damage cell structures including lipids, proteins, and DNA. It's dangerous stuff but we don't have to worry as much because hydrogen reduces toxic oxygen radicals, which is very helpful for any diseases ending in itis, which by definition, by uh, the Greek root, means a disease characterized by inflammation. For instance, myocarditis, if you've heard about that in the news recently. Uh, Inflammation-based diseases are often caused or at least worsened by reactive oxygen species and free radicals. 
and hydrogen is very efficient at dealing with reactive oxygen species. So if you have an itis, this would be very important because remember for the study from Loma Linda University, hydrogen's ability to impact their reported diseases is likely due to its ability to scavenge free radicals and take care of these itises which may also explain why after four weeks of drinking hydrogen-rich water, adult volunteers reported improved mood, anxiety, and autonomic nerve function, uh, resulting in an enhanced quality of life in this study. Now, hydrogen gas, gas has a very wide breadth of uses, and this is one of my favorites. Hydrogen stimulates ATP production in mitochondria. Here's a pilot study on the effects of drinking hydrogen-rich water on muscle fatigue caused by acute exercise in elite athletes. It shows benefits on fatigue. They sh showed less lactic acid or lactate buildup and an improved exercise induced decline of muscle function. Hydrogen gas may be stimulating the mitochondria and protecting it from being damaged. So now you can maintain uh, normal ATP levels. ATP is basically equivalent to energy. It's the, it's the mitochondria's way of producing energy for the cells. It kind of powers everything in your body. And now you can still rely on mitochondria for your ATP needs instead of the glycolysis process. Um, which if you're into athletic training, like you understand what I mean. If not, it doesn't matter. Just ATP seems to help with not getting a sore. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, hydrogen does. And of course, when you consider how important ATP is for everything, um, this is pretty significant because it's the currency of the cell. So the mitochondria where ATP is produced plays a very large role. And so being able to protect the mitochondria is extremely important. This is not medical advice or a suggestion for what you should do, but this is why I use hydrogen water in a fasting state when I wake up in the morning and then 30 minutes later mix my pre-workout with hydrogen water. And then after I exercise, I mix my protein with hydrogen water. From there, I'll inhale hydrogen gas for about an hour writing at my desk to maximize the benefits I'm hoping that I, that I would receive uh, just like in this study. Now here's another study showing that hydrogen gas stimulates mitochondrial function. We're not going to dissect it because we already did that with another, but it's very similar, um, which leads to higher ATP levels. The mitochondria seem to be a major place that hydrogen gas is exerting some of these therapeutic benefits. Uh, there was a great study testing the impact of hydrogen water on athletic performance during uphill running. Their conclusion, supplementation with hydrogen rich water before exercise has been shown to improve lactate, uh, ventilatory and perceptual response, as well as have, uh, having an anti-fatigue effect, particularly in endurance, strength, and repeated sprint ability performance. Now show me an athlete who doesn't want those kind of results, and I'll show you someone who's a crazy athlete. Uh, next up, brain health. This is a very powerful rodent study that showed that hydrogen neutralized and almost completely reversed a specific type of fetal brain damage. Uh, now, this is a study in rats. I want to point that out, not humans. Most of these studies are animal studies, but, uh, you know, they're still, uh, I think the principles can still uh, stand. Uh, when the mother is delivering the baby, sometimes you have an IR injury. And, and that's just an, an issue with uh, blood flow, perhaps. But uh, you could that can cause a lot of brain damage to the infant, which is obviously very sad. So look at these graphs. Here we have the sham, which is where the delivery went perfectly. Everything was totally fine. The degenerated cells uh, percentage was very low, right? Under 3% perhaps. Uh, and then you have the IR injury where you'll notice the percentage of cell damage was very high, nearing 35% on CA1 and CA3. But what happened when the mother drank hydrogen-rich water uh, uh, and then the IR injury was given? It made it look as though the IR injury never actually happened. Maybe because hydrogen gas is so small, it can penetrate the placenta and enter the fetus's circulatory system. Remarkable. Now, molecular hydrogen in drinking water, uh, perhaps uh, molecular hydrogen in drinking water protects neurodegenerative changes induced by traumatic brain injury. This is from the University of Washington and Wisconsin, and incredibly um, uh, advanced study and almost difficult to believe, but they they found that hydrogen gas can really protect the mitochondria and the ATP production uh, in the brain, and they suggest that hydrogen gas could actually increase ATP levels uh, via what's called the Jagendorf reaction. Here, hydrogen-rich water protects against brain injury in rats by regulating calcium buffering proteins. Hydrogen gas is a very neuroprotective, and in many ways that we never would have guessed. Okay, this one's awesome, and it's a mouthful, so I'll translate. Hydrogen-rich water improves neurological function through the attenuation of the blood-brain barrier disruption in spontaneously hypersensitive prone, stroke-prone rats. Now, this may be one of the reasons why hydrogen gas is so effective. It can help attenuate the blood-brain barrier. And we know that's a big, de uh, a big deal. We have a disruption in the blood-brain barrier via hypertension or drugs or, or many other things. And hydrogen gases seems may be able to ameliorate some of those consequences. 
Now this section I think will blow you away, hydrogen and cancer. Hydrogen water enhances the 5-FU, which is a chemotherapy drug to inhibit colon cancer. This is very powerful chemotherapy, widely used, it's very toxic, of course, to cancer cells and unfortunately to all of our other cells. Uh, in this study on colon cancer in rats, hydrogen gas actually offered an additive effect on the chemotherapy drug. Now there's more research that needs to be done here, especially because there are lots of variables with cancer. Uh, but a lot of studies are showing that hydrogen gas can actually protect against the negative side effects of various chemotherapy drugs. Which, speaking of drugs, all have side effects. Now check this one out. While many anti-tumor drugs have yielded unsatisfactory therapeutic results, drugs are one of the most prevalent therapeutic measures for treatment of cancer. It has been reported that hydrogen has no side effects, unlike conventional anti-tumor drugs, and that it is effective against many diseases caused by oxidative stress and chronic inflammation. Recently, there have been an increasing number of papers on the efficacy of hydrogen against cancer and its effects in mitigating the side effects of cancer treatment. Now, side note before we go on to the next slide, one of the first studies, I think this is like uh, mid-1900s, on hydrogen treatment for therapy was actually hyperbaric hydrogen, which, you know, you can uh, see the problem from that. Uh, just think, you know, pressurized hydrogen, that, that sounds like a bomb, right? So it's probably not the safest of all things. And even if, you know, we could get it safe, it's not super scalable. But they found great benefit um, in pressurized hydrogen on cancer. And now we're starting to see uh, other studies in the more recent past that, that are actually usable, you know, functional for, for people that have cancer. Um, this one here, this is an incredible study, Hydrogen Gas in Cancer Treatment from Frontiers in Oncology. Now check out this table from their study. On the left, we have the hydrogen administration method, right, which is hydrogen water, saline, inhalation. Um, and in the middle, we have the report on what uh, they say hydrogen did. And then on the right, we have their report on how hydrogen did it. So just to name a few of the applications they found, we have prevention of lung injury, amelioration of liver toxicity, reversal of skin damage and body weight loss caused by chemo, prevention of renal injury, tumor growth suppression, stem cell, uh, cancer stem cell inhibition, amelioration of cardiac dysfunction, reversal of kidney toxicity induced by chemo, survival rate enhancement, um, and you know many more. These are groundbreaking results. And here's a similar chart uh, they published. It shows some of the same information, but in a more visually appealing way. Right on the far left, we see how hydrogen functioned in the body, things like eliminating uh, reactive oxygen species, inhibiting, infl inhibiting inflammation, cell death, regulation. On the right, we have how hydrogen made the difference, right? Relieve the adverse effects of chemotherapy and radiotherapy, enhance the thermal therapy, suppress tumor uh, quantity and growth. And right then in the center, we have the different functions of hydrogen, how they how they applied those. So if, if I had cancer, um, which, you know, hopefully not, but uh, these would all be things that I would really care about. Uh, this study shows hydrogen water making a positive impact on liver function in cancer patients treated with chemotherapy. Um, if the effects of drinking hydrogen water on the quality of life of patients tested with radiotherapy for liver tumors. Uh, daily consumption of hydrogen-rich water is a potentially novel therapeutic strategy for improving quality of life after radiation exposure. Consumption of hydrogen water reduces the biological reaction to radiation-induced oxidative stress without compromising anti-tumor effects. Now, uh, this is I know that this is a firehouse of studies, but, but hang in there because we're about to dive into hydrogen and diabetes, obesity, and metabolic syndrome. This stuff is very interesting. In this study, molecular hydrogen exerted therapeutic effects to improve type 2 diabetes by improving hyperglycemia and inhibiting oxidative stress. The results showed that molecular hydrogen treatment decreased fasting blood glucose levels, increased hepatic glycogen synthesis, and improved insulin sensitivity. For someone dealing with type 2 diabetes or, oxi um, or, or uh, metabolic syndrome, these are very significant um, uh, issues that, that they're trying to deal with. Another one, uh, supplementation of hydrogen-rich water improves lipid and glucose me metabolism in patients with type 2 diabetes or impaired glucose tolerance. Uh, a few more studies on similar findings for, for these three. Molecular hydrogen improves obesity and diabetes by inducing hepatic FGF21 and stimulating energy metabolism. The conclusion to this article states, our study demonstrates that hydrogen stimulates the GLUT4 translocation and glucose uptake into skeletal muscle and may be a novel therapeutic alternative to insulin in T1DM that can be administered orally. Now, side note, just because this study says it can be an alternative insulin, that does not mean anyone on this 
should stop their insulin. That <laughs> still not medical advice from us, but um, but definitely if you have any of these issues, just because you're finding some interesting studies here with hydrogen does not mean that you can stop what you're currently doing. Please consult with a medical professional uh, before changing anything, of course. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just leave it at that. But just because hydrogen is showing some amazing potential does not mean that we suggest stop stopping any other therapies. Um, now this one, this is fascinating. The effects of a 24 week high concentration hydrogen water on a whole bunch of stuff around metabolic syndrome. Their conclusion, high concentration uh, hydrogen rich water may have a promising effect as a therapeutic modality for attuning risk factors for metabolic syndrome. Very, very cool. Um, now moving on to hydrogen and cardiovascular health. A new study uh, uh, or a new approach for the prevention and treatment of cardiovascular disorders. Molecular hydrogen significantly reduces the effects of oxidative stress. From the study abstract, cardiovascular diseases are the most common cause of death worldwide. Redox dysregulation and dyshomeostasis of inflammation arise from and result in cellular aberrations and patho uh, pathological conditions, which lead to cardiovascular disease. Despite years of intensive research, there is still no safe method effective or there is still no safe and effective method for their prevention and treatment. Recently, molecular hydrogen has been investigated in preclinical and clinical studies on various diseases associated with oxidative and inflammatory stress. Their conclusion, hydrogen can treat many diseases associated with oxidative stress, including cardiovascular disorders. Their greatest advantages for using hydrogen are easy penetration through all biological membranes, right? That's the, the size and the lightness of the molecule impacts that. Um, the, weight, the wide spectrum of administration forms, right? Drinking hydrogen gas, doing a hydrogen saline IV, um, inhaling uh, hydrogen gas as well, and, and little or no significant reported adverse effects. Thus, hydrogen may represent a novel therapeutic strategy to mitigate oxidative stress and its pathological consequences. This study re uh, researched the impact of inhaling oxygen on the progression of chronic heart failure. Their conclusion, as a safe antioxidant, molecular hydrogen mitigates the progression of uh, chronic heart failure via inhibiting apopto apoptosis modulated by P53. Now, side note on this, um, there has been some recent statements by a few doctors on the p53 gene and its viral implications um, hopefully you can read between the lines to see what i'm saying here but but hydrogen uh, seems to upregulate p53 um, the p53 gene which is an important uh, tumor prevention uh, gene so back to their conclusion uh, therefore, the translational point of view and speculation, hydrogen is equipped with potential therapeutic application as a novel antioxidant in protecting chronic heart failure in the future. Uh, now, hydrogen and digestion and gut health. And, and this one, uh, before going into, I'll say is very interesting because anecdotally, and this is, a, you know, again, not advice, but just anecdotally, um, what we've seen is that hydrogen takes about as long like to start seeing benefits in your life um, as the area that you have issues with takes to heal naturally in the human body. So for instance, the gut takes, you know, a, a, just a few days to almost completely uh, rebuild itself, right? All the replication of cells and, and, and everything in your gut, you, you have a new gut almost uh, every few days. Hydrogen, therefore, in the gut, most of our uh, customers that report great impacts of using hydrogen, um, in a quick manner, it's because they have gut health issues. So if you have gut health issues, then when you drink hydrogen water on an empty stomach, what we've seen anecdotally is that people tend to have their issues resolved a little bit faster. Um, I'll have to go through and, and see if I can actually say that on this webinar. We might have to cut that little piece, but if not, uh, I, I just have found that that's very interesting with uh, with a lot of our customers, including my wife, who had uh, you know irritable bowel issues for for years, started drinking hydrogen after you know we tried everything, right? We tried the um, a complete uh, detox diets. We tried elimination. We tried, you know, different supplements and everything. Um, and and for her, after three days of drinking hydrogen water, her gut issues just kind of went away. And and then when she would stop drinking hydrogen water, they would come back. And later on, we found that it was a mold issue and that hydrogen tends to uh, mitigate the impacts of mold in the body. Uh, I don't have that study here with me, but you can just Google hydrogen water and mold and you'll see the studies that I'm talking about. They'll, they'll come right up in the first page of Google. Um, but just very interesting stuff with gut health. So um, pay attention. <laughs> These studies are pretty self-explanatory, so I'm just going to read and elaborate a bit on the titles and conclusions. Hydrogen-rich rich water protects against an, uh, inflammatory bowel disease, 
in mice by inhibiting inflammatory factors, endoplasmic reticulum stress, and promoting the expression of a gene that plays a critical role, critical role in the prevention of vascular inflammation. Hydrogen-rich water as a modulator of gut um, microbiota. Hydrogen water may induce protection of the gut barrier integrity and upregulate a specific type of bacteria that stabilizes blood sugar levels. It also ameliorates symptoms of gut disturbances like diarrhea, weight, and fluid loss. Now, this bottom point, um, although promising, hydrogen-rich water should still be perceived as an experimental drink and not widely recommended to the general public. That's exactly right, and I am recommending nothing. <laughs> Um, this study explored the effects of molecular hydrogen in chronic ulcerative colitis, which is worsened by oxidative damage in intestinal flora uh, dysbiosis. Not surprisingly, hydrogen partially alleviated this inflammation symptoms, which, if you know much about colitis, is a big deal. Um, this small study showed that long-term consumption of hydrogen-rich water not only exerts certain antioxidant and, and anti-inflammatory effects, but also enhances the diversity and abundance of the gut flora of the subjects. Fascinating. Um, okay, that's that, that's all the studies that I have prepared here. Um, hopefully by now you're able to though, visualize a little bit how hydrogen can make a difference. And if you want to dive deeper into these studies, please visit our research library. We have a ton of stuff here that, that you could dive into. I haven't even gone through everything in great detail. There's there's so much information.